Hello, this is Jay Mitchell, and we are back with another episode of the Libertarian Uncensored Podcast, going over all the posts on the Libertarian Uncensored subreddit. Let's get right into it. First, we have Supreme Court Declines Take Up Challenge to Conversion Therapy Ban for LGBTQ Plus Minors from USAToday.com by International Silver One. And I don't know if I comment on that one, but, um, uh, I personally don't think, um, you know, I, I, if, if people don't give consent to conversion therapy, I don't think they should be done, don't, don't, don't doing it. But um, if people do want to consent to it, I guess, you know, they I, I should be available. So that's my thoughts there, you know. If people want to consent to something, you know, they should be able to do it. But they don't want to consent to something, they shouldn't be able to do it. As long as they're not hurting anyone else. Then we have Discord now explicitly bans misgendering and deadnaming transgender people on the platform from Advocate.com, number one by International Silver One. And I said, um, that's a crossword from the LGBT subreddit. And I said, I like what Incremente said, okay, it's a private company, they can do what the, as they wish on their platform. And I said, they say that and freak out when Twitter allows Alex Jones back on. You know, I do agree that Discord should be, be able to do whatever it wants on its platform, but I definitely think we need to support free speech as well, and that includes... Stuff like being mean by by misgendering and dead naming people. And I think that's important to remember as well. So um, yeah, that's important. That that's also so you know. I do think you know private companies can do whatever they want, but we have to hold private companies accountable for their authoritarianism as well. I would say, and that's something that I'm very passionate about. Then we have polls. Should one be able to get an abortion if she has promised the uh, a baby to a gay couple? And that was inspired by a comic I saw on Twitter um, by uh, what's the at, at uh, by uh, George Andrew Alex Olopoulos, and that was a bunch of uh, gay people, gay couples holding up their babies, and um, then they have a picture of all the women incubating their babies like The Handmaid's Tale. And they're in the handmaid's tail dresses. So I said, but yes, I'm pro bodily autonomy above all uh, above all else. And if people want to break contracts any time, I think they should be able to do so. And the poll was 17, 19 votes for yes, three votes for no. And yeah, it's, I, I'm glad that yes won because I think you know we need a poll bodily autonomy. I personally wouldn't want my wife to get an abortion if, if if we agreed to have a child, but ultimately it's her body and not mine. And that's something that we need, I need to, I, I would uphold even if I, even if it was uh, in that hypothetical scenario. So, you know, I personally would probably be really bitter and angry about it, but I do think we need to uphold bodily autonomy and all, at all, at all, at all, at all, at all moments. And then also I think, you know, if you break contracts, people won't trust you. That's how I think of it. Therefore, you are encouraged not to break them. So, you know, you you can make as many contracts as you want. But, um, uh, you know, that, that, that just, that just, you know, you know, each contract is going to be whatever, whatever party is willing to, whatever weight each party is willing to give them. That's what I think I'm getting at there. Yeah. Then we have. An Iowa fight over a satanic display reminds us Republicans believe free speech is only for them. The key to understanding the GOP fervor over anti-sphere over anti-Semitism on campus an alter to Lucifer in the Des Moines Capitol from Salon.com by Clorox. And I don't know if I commented on this one. It's crossword from the AP and stuff right by the way. But um, yeah, I personally do think, you know, uh, free expression is important and, you know, you know, I personally don't think we should have satanic statues and buildings, but, you know, that's free expression. You know, if, if people want to have whatever statues they want in government buildings, I think they should be able to. And, you know, that's that's ultimately what um, the people want. So, you know, I, um, uh, you know, I think, you know, we got to support um, free speech. And, um, uh, and uh, at all possible, you know, uh, and just because this is, this is, this is something that supports the democratic narrative doesn't mean I don't think we should be pushing to make it, uh, illegal, you know, it's like, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I want all free expression to be as legal as possible as long as the nap isn't being violated. That's my fault there, you know, so not something like child porn per se, but definitely something like, you know, this is, 
I don't think it would be a NAP violation, you know, to just have a statue in a building. Then we have Colorado to ban fat phobia discrimination in workplace housing from thehill.com. And I posted that and I said... The woke id poll types are just a few people on Twitter, though. Sarcasm. You know, I don't think people should be mean to others, but I don't want the state to make all these laws about how you have to treat people. And then Clorox, why was the state if not the people? And I said the state is the elites who control the people. That's always an important distinction to make. And, um... I think, you know, the, the, the answer is each person just have their own state and act accordingly. If people want to just try doing something, I don't want to be the one telling them not to. I hate telling people what to do. Then we have the Cure for Libertarian Autism from LP National, and that's a link from their from their website. Well, that's not the actual title. That was the title they called it on Twitter, and I liked it. I thought it was funny. It's a you know, the actual title is a guide for reaching people outside your psychological profile. And I said, um, as an autistic libertarian, you have to pry my you have to pry uh, it from my cold dead hands before I decide to give it up. And I think yeah. So I personally. I mean, I'm not very good at reaching people outside my psychological profile, but you know that's my right to do so. You know I'm very, you know I I I I I, I like to express my opinions my way, and if people don't like that, that's on them. I would say. Then we have America taking a high speed trade to bankruptcy from Reason.com by 2000 Time of Charm, and um. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, we're at the rate we're going, you know, I, I'm surprised that we aren't bankrupt. You know, if the U.S. government was literally anything else other than the world government, it would have to declare bankruptcy by now. But, you know, it's pirates and emperors. If it was an individual, it would be declared bankruptcy, but it's a, it's, it's a state collective, so it never has to. So, you know, uh, that's just how it goes, you know. Some, some of the cities have, I don't know, Detroit did like a decade ago. But increase, and I think I think you know increasingly the U.S. probably should as well, and just and just and just, and just you know get get it over with because you know eventually you have to you reach a point where you can't deny it anymore, and you just have to accept reality. Then we have New York broken broken house in court lets tenants stay for years without paying rent from Reason dot com by two thousand time of charm, and um. Yeah, I personally don't think, you know, because the state should be forced to, 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 I think, I personally think it's more the state, the individual should be forcing the the people out of their house rather than using, using the state to do it. But even then, you know, I definitely think, you know, if you, if you, if you were in agreement, you know, if you, you want to break it, you know, that's fine. But, you know, if people want to just try using force to, to force you out of there for not, for not paying rent, I think they have the option to do so as well. So that's my thoughts on that issue. Then we have, to the military-industrial complex, Zelensky is the gift that keeps on giving. To regular Americans, he is the world's biggest welfare queen from LP National, and that was them, quote, tweeting, um, Michael Tracy, which was, who tweeted, Zelensky mail for the U.S. Arms Manufacturing Industry in Washington, D.C. Here he's pictured alongside executives from Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Northrop Gruen, uh, General Dynamics and Looks like the many lucrative business opportunities still had for these valued partners. And I said, um, right up there with Netanyahu, you know, Netanyahu loves to be a welfare queen as well when it comes to getting all the U.S. money. And I said, um, also said, you know, when, you know, I personally think Ukraine should be able to defend itself, but I don't think people should be forced to give Ukraine money if they don't want to, and that's increasingly what people are forced to do through taxpayer dollars. I feel the exact same way about Israel. People shouldn't be forced to give another country money if they don't want to. I don't think they should be forced to give anything money if they don't want to. And that's increasingly why I'm critical of, of, you know, just the U.S. throwing money around as much as it does. The government of the U.S., that is. Then we have... Ted Cruz wants to stop the FCC from updating data breach notification rules from ArsTactica.com from Patom, by Patom Fertain, and I said he should be pushing to abolish the FCC instead. Then we have GOP investigators refuse to allow public observation of private citizen interrogations in their congressional subpoena from TRGnews.com by Clorox, 
And, um, you know, I personally, um, don't think this is, this mat, this is really, um, too big of a story, but, um, you know, if the GOP wants to justify something, I mean, I'm justify being a authoritarian in this you know, it can do so, and so can the Democrats. That's why I don't trust either of them. They always justify authoritarianism whenever it benefits them. Then we have the media's misleading fear-mongering over climate change from Reason.com by 2000 Time of Charm. And I said, um, you know, humans always find ways to adapt. I'm sure future generations are going to be fine. Then we have U.S. House votes to approve Biden impeachment inquiry, inquiry from BBC.com. And, and Dr. Who 07 posted that. And I said, um... Probably just going to be another virtue single impeachment pass since they don't have numbers in the Senate currently. But Biden also is corrected by the fact that removing him from also put Kamel in there, who is somehow even worse. And um, I also said, at least at the very least, you know, people are saying this is wasting taxpayer money, but at the very least it's not going to Ukraine or Israel. I agree it's kind of wasting taxpayer money, but at the very least we're not sending it to a foreign country, at least in this instance. So that's it at least. You know, they're all corrupt. They all probably deserve to be impeached. But, um, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, it's just another, it's just another grift of just throwing money around until, you know, you know, no, you know, we're always going to be complaining about it. And, you know, that's just, you know, sometimes you just have to cope, I guess. You know, it's pathetic, but so is reality, sadly. That's the sad truth. Then we have... The world's most successful failed state from Hoser on YouTube. And I posted that. And I, that was about um, Equatorial Guinea. And I said, um, as bad as the U.S. can get, at least it could be far worse. And I linked the story from Equatorial Guinea. On Christmas 1969, the president of Equatorial Guinea, Francis Francisco Macias Naguma, had 150 alleged coup plotters executed in the National Stadium while the amplifier system played the Mary Hop recording of Those Were the Days. And that's on the Wikipedia page for the Those Were the Days song. And I also said, you know, you know, currently that's the, the head of Equatorial Guinea, the, the president over there, is only the, is only the successor of that guy. So, you know, that just goes to show you how dictatorial it is. The thing about Equatorial Guinea is it's very much what the anti-libertarian society would look like. The difference between Obiang and a lot of authoritarians in the U.S. government is only that Obiang doesn't have to hide it. Then next we have... Supreme Court will hear a case that could undo capital riot charge riot charge against hundreds from Zachinus. And um Yeah, I personally think and that's an AP News link and um I don't I, they blocked me so I can't respond to that one. But um, you know, I personally think a lot of the capitalist riot was a federal entrapment and I think it needs to be accordingly treated as such. So that's my thoughts there. Then we have Boston Mayor Michelle Wu defends electeds of, electeds of color holiday party after invitation backlash on its mistake from New York Post. And I posted that and I said, I remember when separate but equal used to be seen as a bad thing. Then we have members of Biden's White House staff from Whittling Dan. And that's a cross post from the PIC subreddit. And they're outside the White House saying, but of, uh, President Biden, your staff demands a ceasefire. And, um... Yeah, that's interesting, you know. I personally would argue in a lot of instances the staff might have more power than the president because they can use bureaucratic bullshit to get things done, to get their agenda done. But, um, yeah, if they want to go out and protest, I think they should be able to as well. Um, I personally don't really get care for them, though, since they're just, they're, they're just you know, living off the government paycheck of, of their bureaucratic bullshit jobs. Then we have... John Fettermoyne joined the corresponding wing of the GOP and Dems to renew warrantless domestic spying despite ample evidence of massive FBI abuse. A coalition of pro-privacy Dems and GOP has 35 votes against it. Need 41 to stop it. The no votes uh, here opposed unlimited FBI spying from Glenn Greenwald on Twitter. And I posted that and I said, so glad I didn't vote for that motherfucker. Because you know, he's just, he's always, I'm this progressive, but no, he's just a number of the neoliberals who's just going to stab you in the back. Then we have defunding woke ideologically driven, useless bureaucracy, a public tax on universities, not free speech from Brad Palumbo on Twitter, and that was his reply to Nicole Hannah-Jones, like, we're saying, where's fire when uh, Oklahoma just established 
the establishment's DEI departments at all the universities. And I said, Agreed. DEI and ESG are just the latest free letter acronyms used to push authoritarianism. And I think we're going to wrap it up there. I'll see you guys next episode. Bye.